Welcome, Retake Gang, to a brand new episode. I'm Lisa Dwan here with Parker and Cheryl McKay. Hello. On this episode, we are not going to talk about Tatranka. Okay? No Tatranka. No Tatranka this episode because, one, we Can't need more time to really just absorb. Yeah, I'm I mean, still... it just came out on the test server. Yeah. Can't yeah. really talk about something True. that we haven't really had tons of hands on experience. That's so. the logical way to look at it. And the other one is just, I think our producers are still in shock, and so they need time to really get their bearings back and write a good piece on it, you know? Yeah, also shirtless pictures of him. Yeah, yeah, we're still looking for shirtless I pictures. I have plenty. Of Tachanka. We're not looking, I have a lot. I can give them <laughs> to Tachanka? you whenever, whenever you He just like. has a uh -huh. secret folder on his, you know I what? actually have a framed portrait of a shirtless Tachanka. You are so lucky. Can that's I have a, a copy? That's actually a true story. Is that really a true story? Yeah, because we filmed a video for Pro League way back in the day and they used them as props and I kept it because I thought it was funny. Interesting kink, but very understandable. So, no Tachanka this episode, but what will be on this episode, Parker? Well, Oxygen Esports was the first team out of North America to qualify for the mini major, so we're gonna ring up Slash Ugg and talk to him. Figure it's probably a good time for Spencer Oliver to step onto our show. Sure. We're gonna be looking at Prano and Team Secret in Europe and how they're doing. They've been pretty good. And then the hottest plays of the week, as always. That's right. Speaking of hot plays, you know who's been really hot this past week? Me. All right, sure, I'll give you that one, fine. Uh, but I was talking about Chaos. You know you know Chaos, the European team? Yes. That finally got a win. It's a ladder. All right, you know what? Let's just, let's just hear about Chaos in this archives, okay. The drought is finally over for Chaos fans. After 12 play days, Chaos finally got their first win of the EU League. Their back-to-back -back victories against Rogue and Virtus Pro net them two more than the whopping zero Ws they collected in Stage 1. It was also Chaos's first Tier 1 win since beating Na'Vi in the final match of Pro League Season 11 all the way back in April. It's been a long and winding road for Chaos, so let's take a look at how the Snakes slowly slithered to their first EU League win. Chaos came out of Pro League Season 11 as the number seven team in the EU with five wins to their name. Back-to-back -back fourth place finishes at the Allied Vegas Minor and DreamHack Valencia were the biggest highlights for the team in 2019. 37 wins, one draw, and 38 losses last year made Chaos one of the most even keel teams in Pro Rainbow Six. The org made some small changes for EU League, benching secretly and releasing their manager and analyst Syred. Chaos brought on Cry in to round out the roster and snagged Fresh from G2 to be their new analyst. Cryon would end up being their best performing player in Stage 1 with a rating of 1.09 to his name. He and Vito were the only members with positive ratings for Chaos, with Renewals and Red Groove struggling in the first stage. Six has been a constant number looming over the heads of Chaos, pulling off six to six score lines six times across Stage 1 and 2. Is this some form of satanic signaling from Chaos Esports Club? Unlikely, but we'll keep an eye on it. In all seriousness, the draws were often a good sign that Chaos had some kick left in them, going the full 12 rounds against stronger teams like Rogue and Na'Vi. After finishing dead last, Chaos dropped Red Groove and Shate for Secretly and their former stand-in of Next One. Dropping a fan favorite like Shate is sure to make waves, so Reddit's finest were quick to declare Chaos dead in the water for Stage 2. After getting smacked around by BDS, drawing against Na'Vi, and then losing to Secret, Chaos faced off against a struggling rogue. The snakes sunk their teeth in, with Cryon, Renewals, and Vito popping off to hit seven round wins for the very first time. Chaos took that success and flipped it towards a dominant win against Virtus Pro on the next play day. It wasn't all doom and gloom for Chaos up until now, however. The team looked powerful throughout the Nordic Championship. The snakes were kings in the north, going 12-2 and two in the season before finally capturing the Nordic Championship this September. With two wins under their belt now, Chaos has wide widen the gap between them and last place for the time being. We'll have to see if Chaos can sneak out of relegation or if the Snakes will be chased out of the EU League this November. Parker, I know it's been a while now, but when, when and why did you drop the bang from your name? Uh, you, just, you just lost zest for life and you decided to drop the bang? No, uh, little kids thought that it was uh, sexual. Oh, I also thought it was sexual. <laughs> yeah, the, I, the amount of people that would come into my Twitch chat or would ask me on Twitter and say like, is an intero bang when you have a uh, blank when you're getting interrogated? And the answer is Wait, hold on, no. what's the blank? <laughs> wait, wait, someone needs to fill me in what the blank is because I'm not getting it. 
when you get it. Okay. You don't get it? Are I don't you get serious? It. I'm actually serious. What's when you're being interrogated? When you're committing a certain act while getting interrogated, and they think that the intero banging. What is this the an urban dictionary? Portion. Is that for real? Wait, what's yeah. the bang? Oh, the no, having sex while being interrogated. That's what an intero. No, an intero bang is a punctuation character. Oh, that's a less interesting story than I thought. Ah, well, that's okay. But speaking of names. <laughs> We got the man so nice they named him twice. Spencer Oliver, you'll know him as Slash Hug from Oxygen. Let's call him up and hear from him. Welcome Slash to the show. Thank you so much for taking time and joining us today. How are you? Very good, about yourself? Very good, very good. I'm excited to talk to you because this is our first time chatting and this is the first time you're on retake. So we got lots to talk about. I want to know, how has life been in Vegas? Because you guys have moved out, spent a couple months now together. How has it been? I mean, it's been pretty good. I've lived here for the past uh, two years, so I'm pretty like used to the life already and like the the gaming house life, I guess. Like This is like my third gaming house I've lived in. Now, I'm always curious about your team. Oxygen seems like a bunch of rowdy boys, and I want to confirm or deny, what's it like living with these guys? I mean, they're definitely more rowdy than anyone else I've lived with. Um, you know, they have fun. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Like it's uh, it's never like it's not like any other team house I lived with. But everyone's really close. Like probably the closest team I've been on in terms of like how good everyone is as friends. The house is crazy. Like there's usually always something going on or someone yelling or something fun happening. So you know, I luckily I get to like avoid most of it out here in my own little room. But um, I mean yeah, it's fun. Like I don't know, it's it's the dream. Everyone wants to do it, and you know it's as good as I thought it would be. From stage, you know, stage one, you guys did well, qualified for the majors first, but unfortunately ended, obviously you guys didn't win the major. And then now coming into stage two, I'm curious whether there were, you know, talks within the team. Did you guys change anything coming into this stage to make sure that doesn't happen again? Yeah, so um, from stage one, we, start, we started really hot. Um, we won like our first two games, our first three games, basically like cleanly with no issues. Um, and then I feel like we started trying to overcomplicate what we were doing, switching roles for no reason, just because like we thought it might give us like a 1% edge or something, but it ended up just making us worse. So for stage two, for us, it was mostly just going back to basics, ironing those out. And then instead of trying to like add a bunch of big changes, just like slowly like improving on that and working on our game plans for opponents changing just stuff for like the game plan and you know it's been good so far after you know our first match uh versus tempo um we didn't play very well but after that i think we've lost like i think we've 2 0 everyone since then so it's been going really good just on that note it's interesting to talk about kind of like strategizing philosophy right whether it's better to be good at one thing and do that really well or diversify and come up with a lot of different strategies um obviously you guys are trying to find that balance, but what is your personal belief on it? What's better? Um, you know, I think that with our team and our players, we're able to learn new strats so quickly without even like really having to practice them. I think what works out for us is just going by like a weekly game plan, adding any strats we need, and then just sit, like, you know, modifying our basic strats to fit like the opponent, which like sometimes they end up being completely different. Sometimes they're the same, but I think like, there's a good in-between between being flexible and being rigid that is like where we are right now. Mm -hmm. Would you say the fact that you guys can play a lot of different, you know, strats, the biggest strength of Oxygen or what do you think is the biggest strength? Um, I think our, our biggest strength is definitely like individual skill. Um, but like when you mix that with strat, uh, like good solid like foundation of strategy, like you're, you know, it, it works. For us, like, one thing a lot of teams struggle with is like they get if something goes wrong in their strat they lose and for us like that's not a problem because we all have like individual playmakers who can like bring a round back from like man disadvantaged like hard breach or dying or like something not going right we can like figure it out in the round just on that topic you know thinking back to memories of playing in front of a large crowd and obviously this year things that are not going that way you guys have to move online you guys been playing everything online the next major is going to be online has it been hard for you to kind of, you know, move everything to online? You miss the, the real life, you know, experience. How has it been? I mean, it's definitely like not as motivating just playing online. It feels like Groundhog Day almost that like every day is the same. You play the same NA teams. 
playing the same same NA teams in Pro League. Then I go play those guys in the major. Then we play them in like whatever event we have next. So just playing those same teams over and over. Definitely like lose some motivation, but you know, you just gotta like hold tight and wait, like because eventually things will come back to uh to normal. All right, well, we're almost out of time, but I wanna just on that note, you know, we have you have a lot of fans. I think Oxygen, one of the greatest things about the team is that the fans are very uh, outspoken. They're huge memers, they're great. So is there something you'd wanna say to the people that support you and the team? I mean, yeah, like thanks to everyone who supports us, especially through like this like online period where we can't really do much in terms of like going to events or anything. Um, we always appreciate like anyone who's willing to like take their time to watch our matches and support us. So yeah, shout out to them and uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Slash. I wish you the best of luck at the major and we'll talk to you next time. Let's start off in Brazil, where Astro's there exactly when his team needs him most. Up against NIP on coastline, Astro hits one sick flick to keep the clutch going and take the round for a phase. Yeah, cool entrance, so we're looking at a potential plant spot, but Muzi and Pino, they come in with big kills onto Live and Ion, and that is NIP rocketing themselves towards, leveling things up for the half, but Yuna, he aggresses on into sight and takes himself a kill onto Kamikaze and starts getting that diffuser down. I'm not sure that NIP are aware. However, Julio Notis is in the absolute nick of time and he puts the man down one versus two now. It is all up to Astro once again, second round in a row that he finds himself in this man disadvantage clutch situation. But certainly better than it was last time. He's on full HP. He sees one man in front of him. He looks to move in and make the challenge. They hit the deck and go prone. Astro finds the first onto Cycle and the second onto Muzi. Shuts him down and what a great double from Astro to clutch out the round. Doesn't even think about the diffuser, just goes straight in for the kills. No, that flick shot of the guy towards cool vibes is mental. That's absolutely ridiculous. This soldier from Talon might only be 18 years old, but he's shown he's got lots of talent for his age. While covering the plant on theme park, Soldier sets himself up and knocks down four members of Nora Rango with E. Now, what well, with 30 seconds left, they've left themselves in a good position, but they're just gonna run through here and frag out and what? I bet you they get the plant off here as well. Well, Soldier's got his way into sight and now covering out the plant behind. All he's got to do is sit and watch the doorway and hopefully someone can test this back angle. Otherwise, this could be rough for them. There we go. Soldier's holding the right one with a 2K coming through into this round and Talon have got the diffuser down. Norengo in a three versus three, pushing in from control here. No C4s on side to make use of as the Valkyrie brought along the shield. So it's all going to come down to being able to land some crucial shots. Do they look low or do they look high? Soldier rotating back out. Watches one for himself. Gets the 3K. Can he make it a four? Yes, he can. That's a lot for the young 18 year old won't be the ace coming out but as a new player that had such a rough two or three first play days this is the kind of play you want to see coming out of soldier moving on soldier is not the only one fragging out on talon this week only a few rounds after Soldier's 4K, Labyrinth one-ups him with the monstrous Mason ace. Once more, Solboy gets the opening kill onto BD. That's Norengo starting things off in positive form. Let's not forget whoever takes this one can force us through to overtime potentially, because if it ends 6-6 here in APAC, of course, we do have overtime still to play. But there's the smokes coming in for the big execute. Shingo walks in with a slither of HP. Ramu is still alive, albeit down. That plant is coming out, but gets shot out by the Evil Eye and a double Pokeball. Never before has that been seen in the realm of Pokemon. Either way, Labyrinth 3k a 4k comes in everything from a single angle and my god Nora Rengo this is the problem when you funnel through a single angle like this Soulboy has managed to make his way in but with himself being caught out by the Malusi with the evil eye staring him down from two different directions he is in for a world of hurt that is going to be a flawless round and an ace coming out for Labyrinth perfect stuff as you'll see in this next clip Labyrinth's not the only one who can pull off aces around here who else but Shaco could pull off an ace like this one, gunning down Vitality with the pistol to end it. Franchiro slowly crept towards his own demise and didn't see it long enough to be able to creep away. And now this is the pace that they had before. Last time it was successful. Can they double down on that success? There goes one outside. Shaco swings onto Bebo and swings uh, onto the open hatch and the open wall and the open firefight and the open man inside the top as well and one more for the trouble a triple across rafters as the aggression comes now from hungry who's digging himself around the back of the site skeleton key through a man and the wall itself and then drops an with an ace from shaiko an ace oh my god shaiko just popping up here first getting the one kill onto the onto the balcony then two onto rafters 
And then just chasing the last few down with the pistol as well. And who else but the boss goat could casually pull off clutches like this? Only seconds left on the clock. So Bosco barrels in and claps TSM with the M249. Will go off. Fultz blinded and punished by Achieved. He's playing over by Freezer and doing double duty. Down goes Canadian, twisting and turning with the Fuser in hand. Rampy trying to keep it close, but he's punished by Bolo. Out swings the Capital. He wins this one. SSG will need to rate, grab that diffuser. 10 seconds left. This is going to be tough, but Bosco catches one. He knows that there's another in his position. He hunts him down. Bosco just needs one more remaining. Oh. And he'll get it. Every single kill lines up for Bosco. Space Station steals that one from TSM, avenging the previous round. Bosco winning every fight he's presented with. What a round from the man. Let's dust off the six pack with an incredible clutch from Mark the Shark. Looking to keep his team alive against the Sonics, Mark bloodies the water in this clutch. Just cracks with the headshot. It's only down to Mark and Jarvis with this kitchen hold. And they got to make something happen here. That's why Mark's pressuring up these stairs so early on, especially inside of this situation. If he's able to get any kills here, oh no. Oh no, he sees him. Able to get one. Can he get two? He can. Oh, Mark, the double kill. Can he get the guy inside of New Balk? He cannot just yet. But that changes up the entire game plan for Sonics as Mark makes a huge play. Iconic desperately trying to hunt down Mark, but he's long gone already, falling back to the red stairs. The only benefit of this is the Sonics still have a good amount of time to work with. They don't have to massively panic just yet, despite losing those two players off of a massive play from Mark. Now going down, of course, that was 30 seconds remaining. It seems like they're getting ready to drop into the freezer half. That would be the expected play from Tempo, though. So Tempo should already be set up to counter this. In fact, they are, but Iconic wins out the initial fight anyway. Everything goes to Mark. He's got to bring us a 4K for the clutch on this one. We might not even get that first kill. He's already been found out just on the edge of the kitchen doorway. Does catch the player on the hop down. That's easily eliminated. He definitely won't be revived here over the next few seconds. And Iconic can't win it out either. A massive round from Mark as he finishes out the 4K and nets his team round number eight. Oh my, Mark. What a round from you. That's all for this six pack. Be sure to share your favorite plays of the week with us at Watch Free Tape. The secret is out for Team Secret. Once one of the worst performing teams in EU, they've turned things around and fast. After finishing second to last in stage one, Secret have reinvented themselves into the number two team in Europe. Let's dive into the numbers of Secret's EU league struggles and successes, starting with how they got here in the first place. We're gonna flash back to Challenger League season 11, when Team Secret actually had a completely different roster at the time. The core of Team Secret's current roster played as Orglis back then and featured Prano, Draven, Hyfe, Chaos, and Expo. Orglis would make the EU League by only a single point, while the OG Team Secret would finish fifth that season. It was Prano's second Challenger League season, and he was already putting Europe on notice. The young gunner was the fifth highest rated player in EU Challenger League, tied for first on entry frags and tied for second on cost. With the EU League spot secured, Team Secret dropped their mixed squad and gave the Germans a new home. The team walked in alongside Tempra as the newest additions to the Tier 1 scene, with a hard road ahead of them. While they'd hold their own in the opening playdays against Na'Vi and Vitality, they got tossed around by many of the top teams throughout the stage. Their only wins would come against Team Empire and Chaos, good enough for ninth place. Despite the hard times, Prano's performance was spectacular. He was the number three rated player and led the league in KD and opening kills. He and Draven topped the scoreboard for Secret, while Chaos and Expo struggled and were ultimately dropped at the end of stage one. Secret restocked with Shate and made British hotshot Packbull their new in-game leader for stage two. Since then, the team has been electric to watch, taking down the likes of G2 and Rogue to open things up. Naturally, Prano is top of the team. He's third in Europe for rating, KD, and entries, with no signs of slowing down. However, his teammates haven't been quiet by any stretch. The one and only Ratbull has a total of five sneaky clutches to his name, the most in Europe. And while Draven has slowed down a tiny bit, Hype has picked up the pace. He's second on the team for kills with a 1.03 rating. Even in their losses to BDS and Na'Vi, the team kept things close thanks to some pretty hard carries. If Secret wants to keep this newfound momentum going, they'll need to find consistency as a team. Secret has shown a lot of potential in this stage, although their stat line doesn't always reflect their successes. As stage two begins to wind down and the major season ramps up, 
we'll have to keep an eye on Europe's newest contenders. All right, let's do some six posting. This is where we share and discuss the things the community has been sharing online. There's lots of good stuff. You're grooving, you're feeling it. There's good stuff to share. There is a lot of good stuff to share. Lots of great things. Off. I'll start off yeah. with some excellent craftsmanship from Twitter user, uh, The Milk. Is that maybe, a question? <laughs> maybe it's more of like, uh, The Milk? Okay. Or maybe it's more definitive, like, uh, The Milk. <laughs> there is no punctuation on it. So we don't, we don't really know. Decide. However, they did a great job with this. It's none other than Montaigne's shield, known as, with no French accent, La Roc, which stands for The Rock, if I understand. <laughs> you are good at translating. Thank you very much. I pride wow, myself on my amazing. minimal understanding of a second language. Speak English! Standard! After they weighed it, came in at a whopping 37 pounds, which in kilograms is, I have no idea, because I actually don't know. In kilograms, it's actually how, uh, Converted, it's more than I could lift. That's just, that is, okay, okay, fine. Your 10 pounds, pounds is not that much, you are weak. Excuse, oh, excuse me, I can do 10 pounds, one in each hand. Oh, that sounds cool, but I should put my hand down. <laughs> Next post came up on my timeline and I thought it'd be really good to share because Face It has actually been killing it with the memes recently. I don't know if you've seen any, uh, but you're in this one. They so do employ me. So let's see it. So it's captioned. You're in a game and these guys join the lobby. <laughs> what do you do? Just want to show here, so Milos is Kaid, kicks us Ash, belly playing castles, ironic with his best bandit impression, and you as Buck, cause Canadian. I think I look like a pretty good Buck, to be honest. Dude, the beard I don't, is just Yeah, I don't think it's that bad, even though it's a very old photo of me. You look the same. I like to have think that I'm No, No, you hotter. look great. Okay, why, this is the second time. Hotter. No, I want to point out, can we zoom in on Belly's face? Did you notice? Dude, it's hilarious. It's when, I think it's, he's doing like a, like a karate pose or something like that. I just thought Belly's was like smoldery. And it made Stop me- Stop saying smoldery. Why? You said hot you twice. I can't say smoldery. Because I am. I mean, Belly's hot as well. You can say Belly's hot. You're hot, Belly. All right, that's it for this episode. Be sure to follow us on all of our socials at Watch Retake and follow our YouTube channel where we post all of our segments online so you can watch it again and again. See you guys next week.